Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel Peterisms where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And I woke up today thinking it was going to be much cooler <clears throat> because the last couple days it's been in the mid to upper 90s and today it was supposed to be like 81. It is not 81 today. It is easily 85 to 87, which is cooler than it's been, but it is still squelchering hot outside. But I don't mind it, because I'm trying to enjoy the last days of summer. So I'm sitting here drinking some coffee and did my prayers and meditations and all that stuff. And um, while well, my husband is inside eating some air fried pizzas. And I thought that I would um, read a few meditations. So I just brought with me today the Melody Beatty meditation. So let's hope they're good. Let's get into them. Today is August 26th. And we're going to first read from The Language of Letting Go by Melody Beatty. My favorite meditation book of life. Okay, August 26th. Let's see what it has to say. Making amends, which I actually talk about over here quite a bit. Um, this is from step nine of Al-Anon. Make direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so but injure them or others. When we make amends, we need to be clear about what we're apologizing for and the best way to say we're sorry. What we are really doing with our amends is taking responsibility for our behavior. We need to be sure that the process itself will not be self-defeating or hurtful. Sometimes we need to directly apologize for a particular thing we have done or are part in a problem. Other times, instead of saying, I'm sorry, what we need to do is work on changing our behavior with a person. There are times when bringing up what we have done and apologizing for it will make matters worse. We need to trust timing, intuition, and guidance in this process of making amends. Once we become willing, we can let go and tackle our amends in a peaceful, consistent, harmonious way. If nothing feels right or appropriate, if it feels as if we are about to do what we are about to do will cause a crisis or havoc, we need to trust that feeling. Attitude, honesty, openness, and willingness count here. In peace and harmony, we can strive to clear up our relationships. We deserve to be at peace with ourselves and others. Today I will be open to making any amends I need to make with people. I will, I will wait for divine guidance in the process of making any amends that are not clear to me. I will act when led. God help me let go of my fear about facing people and taking responsibility for my behaviors. Help me know I am not diminishing my self esteem by doing this. I am improving it. Um, I don't know that I've ever disagreed with Melody Beatty before in a video, but um, from my point of view, just my perspective, my experience, strength, and hope, there's something that she says at the beginning of this meditation that, in, in, my, in my understanding of making amends from a recovery point of view, um, that I don't agree with. And, and sh so this book is from an Al-Anon point of view, which is a sister program to Alcoholics Anonymous, and it is for friends and family members of alcoholics and addicts. I am not a member of Al-Anon. I do not know, I mean, I've been to Al-Anon meetings, I've spoken and shared my story in an Al-Anon meeting. Um, I do not know what their attitude is about making amends or saying I'm sorry and things like that. So that would need to come from somebody that was a member of Al-Anon and had worked steps in Al-Anon and had a sponsor in Al-Anon and things like that. Okay. I don't have that experience. So I'm just sharing from the point of view of being somebody in recovery. But at the beginning here, when it says, when we make amends, we need to be clear about what we're apologizing for and the best way to say we're sorry. Okay. So here's my thing is that in recovery, I think It'd be, you'd be hard-pressed to find anybody that knows anything about working steps that wouldn't say to you, making amends is not saying I'm sorry. It's absolutely 100% not saying I'm sorry. In fact, by the time that we've gotten sober, the people that we are making amends to have heard I'm sorry so many times that it really doesn't mean anything to them anymore. So to come to them and say, I apologize, I'm sorry, is literally more salt on the wound. Um, I can remember... Before I got sober, I would say I'm sorry to my dad, and my dad finally one day said, and I've shared this in a lot of videos, he said, I don't want to hear you say I'm sorry because sorry means forget what I just did. He goes, your sorries mean absolutely nothing to me, which is my, why my dad was such a huge proponent of walking the walk, not talking the talk, and actually showing that I had made growth and that there was action behind my words of my amends, if that makes sense, right? My understanding of an amends and the amendment process is that the amends 
when you think about like an amendment to the Constitution, it's a change to the Constitution, right? So when we're making amends to somebody, what we are doing is we are demonstrating that we have changed. We are taking responsibility, which she does say this in here, taking responsibility for our actions of how we have wronged that person. We are allowing that person, and I'm, I'm honestly just sharing like I would share in a meeting of my understanding of this, kind of. I probably would share some personal stories with this, but... Um, you know, we're taking responsibility for our actions. Now, these things, th th that's really step nine of 12-step program is making direct amends. Step eight is coming up with a list of, of people that you had harmed, right? And became willing to make amends to them all. When you do that, you come up with a list of, of how you've harmed this person, what you've done. So if I need to make amends to Judy Smith, right? Before I go into that amends, I've already prepared with my sponsor and prayed on it as well and, you know, talked to my higher power about the things that I felt that I have done wrong to Judy Smith. Then, with my sponsor's guidance, when my sponsor says it's the right time, I reach out to Judy Smith and I say, Hey Judy, can I make amends to you? I'm part of a 12-step program. I've been sober for such and such time. You know, it is recommended that we make amends to certain people. Some people will tell you, no, blow it out your ASS. I don't ever want to speak to you again. Other people will welcome you with open arms and say, sure, I would love to hear this amends, right? And you don't have to accept somebody's amends. I want to make that very, very clear. I was asked that not too long ago in a, in a, a video by somebody that's watched my videos for a long time. They said, what do I do if somebody wants to make amends to me and I'm not prepared to listen? You don't have to listen to their amends. You can say, I'm not ready to hear it today. I might need another month. I might need several years. I might never be in a position because of the harm that you did to me to hear your amends, you know? Anybody in recovery can find other ways to make amends other than just directly going to that person. But that is what we recommend, is to directly go to that person and take a responsibility. And so you go to that person and you say, I'm in a 12-step program. I've been sober for this amount of time. I work with a sponsor. This is what a sponsor is. You explain the whole process to them, right? And then you say, part of this process is making amends to the people that I have wronged. Let me share with you what my understanding is of how I've wronged you. And then you go through that with what you've prepared with your sponsor. Then when you get done with that, you look at the other person and you say, am I leaving anything out? Are there things that you need to tell me that I'm not remembering? And then, and I have to tell you, that's the hard part. And I've had that happen to me many times, you know, where people will be like, yeah, I need to tell you this. And you did, you know, and I was like, oh, I was completely unaware, you know, of the way that you felt or the way that I treated you or the things that happened. You know, sometimes I didn't remember them because I was in a blackout when they happened, you know, but I'm talking also about amends since I've been sober, people that I had to make, that I didn't realize that my words or the things that I had done had impacted them that way, that way you know, and so it was really powerful to hear it from them. And then what you say to them is, you don't say, I'm sorry, I apologize, that just takes it all away. You say, what can I do to make this right? What can I do to clean up the wreckage of my past for you? You put it in their hands, you know? Some people might say, all is forgiven. Thank you for coming to me and talking to me. You know, with financial amends, we recommend that you pay in full financial amends. Um, so if you owe $1,000, you pay back $1,000. If you don't have it at the time, you pay it back a little bit at a time, $20 here, $10 there, whatever, until the financial amends is paid in full. Um, but you leave it up to that person to tell you how you're going to make up for that amends. Maybe they'll tell you, like, I had an ex of mine say, I don't ever want to see you again. Don't ever speak to me. I could do that, you know? Another person might say to you, well, I, you know what? Like, I would like you to, to, to donate so much time to charity of doing this. I've heard people say that before, and you have to do that. So, no, it's not just a simple, I apologize and I'm sorry, you know? And, and, and in all honesty, I'm kind of surprised that she said that in her meditation, because I do know a lot of people that are in Al-Anon. I know a lot of people that are <clears throat> involved in Al-Anon and involved in other 12-step programs. And I don't believe that to be Al-Anon's understanding of making amends. I believe that Al-Anon's understanding of making amends is very similar to mine. So I'm kind of surprised that she even goes there. Because I can tell you right now, if anybody with any amount of time sitting in a 12-step meeting said an amends means I'm sorry, you would be like, quickly people would be like, that's not what it is. In fact, when people bring it up in meetings and say, typically, I'm starting my amends process. Can you give me some suggestions? You will rampantly hear in the group people say, it's not saying I'm sorry. It's not just a quick apology. It's taking responsibility. It's showing that you've changed. It's showing that this will never happen again by your actions afterwards. And it's putting it in their hands of how you will make this right. What do, what do you need to do for them to make it right? And then showing over time that you truly have changed, you know? And it's a really important process. Um, when I first got sober, 
I heard a lot of people say, like, if you don't do your fourth step and your fifth step, like your uh, searching and fearless moral inventory, which is where you go over your resentments and your fears and your conduct, and you don't go over that with your sponsor and your fifth step or your minister or your rabbi or whoever, like a lot of people choose to do. If you don't do that, you'll go back out there and use. I have to tell you that in my experience of being sober for 28 years and I don't know how many months, eight or nine months at this point, eight months, I have witnessed more people that have gone back out and started using again because they refuse to make their amends to people. Because they refuse to make amends to an ex-husband or they refuse to make amends to an ex-wife or they refuse to make amends to a parent or they refuse to make financial amends to, you know, a business that they used to work for where they would, you know, put money that they shouldn't have on, uh, you know, what do you call it, on expense accounts and things like that and they knew that they were doing that. You know, or, you know, people that have stolen from family members or friends and things like that. And they weren't willing to do that. I, I think that eats us up more alive, you know. The more people that I have been able to look at in my face and take responsibility for my actions and then said, what do you need me to do with this and cleaned up the wreckage of my past, you know, the easier it is for me to move through this world. Um, and it's an it's a integral part of recovery, you know. But like I said, and I want to say this for people out there that aren't in recovery, but might have people that get sober that will come to them. You know, you are the ones that have been harmed. You are the ones that get to dictate when that person makes amends to you. So just because they come to you and they say, I want to make amends to you, I think to offer that person a voice and say, okay, I'll, I'll listen to what you have to say. You can also stop that conversation at any point. You know, if they get into this whole I'm sorry bit, or they get into, and I did a whole video talking about amends not too long ago, but if you get into this whole, if they get into this whole I'm sorry part, or like it starts feeling like maybe they're blaming you, because a lot of people go into amends feeling like they deserve an amends in return. I can tell you, I've made amends to a lot of people that I felt like at the end of the amends, I was going to go, now where's my amends, you know, of other people in recovery, right? Never got one. Well, that's not the right motive to go into it for. The motive is to clean up my side of the street and take responsibility for my actions. But there's a lot of people that don't, and I'm not like saying I'm the most purest person in the entire world. There's been many times where, you know, I've really had to check my motives or, you know, I can remember there was somebody that I wanted to make amends to years ago and I was working with a different sponsor at the time. And I said to him, I hadn't talked to this person in years. And I was going to have an opportunity to talk to them on the phone because there was a reason why we had to talk. And I said, um, I need to make amends to her. So I, I needed to you know, prepare this amends really quick. And he said, she wasn't even on your inventory. And I said, well, I know. And I kind of forgotten about this, blah, 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 whatever. But I need to make this amends. And he said, no, you're not going to do it. And I said, what do you mean? I was pissed. And I go, what do you mean you're not going to do it? He goes, this is a selfish amends. He said, you just want to write this so you feel better about yourself going forward. And he said, you haven't even inventoried this to take a look at what your part is in this, what her part may be in this, if you even owe her an amends. We haven't even talked about what happened so that we, I don't even know if you owe her an amends or not. You may not even owe her an amends. And um, I was mad. I got off the phone and I called my best friend and she was like, well, he's right. I was like, God, all these people are saying that he's right. You know, I was mad. I wanted to make this amends. Well, now I look back on that and what I, I know is the amends that I would have made would have been this sacrificial amends of I did everything wrong, you did nothing wrong, when that's not the case. And I would have had a lot of resentments about that down the road, you know? She did a lot of things in that relationship. There, I did, It wasn't mine to take complete ownership over. Yeah, there were things I did that I needed to take ownership over. But it was it was going to be the selfish amends because I just wanted to make things right and get pats on the back, you know? <clears throat> it was from an old supervisor. It was from somebody that I had sought validation for for many, many years. And I was still looking for that validation. And that was the deeper issue, right? That was why I wanted to make that amends. I have since made that amends. I have since made an appropriate amends. And she and I have a good relationship today because I was able to do it appropriately and take a look at what my part in that was and what did I specifically need to take amends for. And not just take amends for everything. You know, sometimes we want to do all or nothing. Sometimes we want to go into making amends and say, well, I, I owe this huge amends or no, I'm only going to take, you know, do this little thing. When we really need to take a look at what our, our behavior and our actions really were, you know? And no, it's not just saying I'm sorry. 
I said I'm sorry to so many people back in the day with like hurting so many relationships and things. That, I mean, my words meant nothing. And I don't know about most people out there that have addicts and alcoholics in their life, but my guess would be if you are a family member or a friend of an alcoholic or an addict, you are so tired of hearing the words I'm sorry. Like they mean nothing to you probably, you know? And so, no, it's not about that. It's about the action behind that. It's about going into that and saying, okay, what am I showing? Who am I today as a person, you know? And this is how I've changed. And I promise you that going forward, it will be the same. You know, that's also why it's important not to do amends too early. Like, I see people that get sober and, like, like two months away, they want to start making amends to their family. I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a second, okay? I was recommended. We don't rush into those things. We got to show a little bit of growth. We've got to show a little bit of change first, okay? If I had come at my dad at two months sober and been like, I'm ready to take responsibility for everything, he'd be like, you don't fully understand the impact of everything that you've done to even be taking responsibility for it. You know, and my dad made me wait a while before I made amends to him. He was like, no, I don't think you fully understand, Jed. I don't think you possibly could fully understand, like, the gravity of what you've done, you know? And I'm glad for that because our relationship today, the foundation of our relationship, ba is based a lot. He and my stepmother is based a lot on that amends I made to him, you know? And, and I am so grateful that I had fantastic guidance from sponsors through the years that said, no, it's not the right time. No, this is not what you're going to say. No, this is not how you're going to say it. No, you're going to you're gonna have grace when you to, for this person. You're going to allow them the graciousness to do it when they feel comfortable and they want to hear it from you. You're going to allow them to have control. You're not going to just go in there and say, I'm sorry, and try to just clean all this stuff up real quickly. And I think sometimes people misunderstand that when I say making amends. It's just like this moment in time to clear things up. No, it's not that at all. It's taking responsibility for your actions. It's asking them, how do I right this wrong? Doing what they ask you to do, and then walking the walk for a, forever. Not ever going back to what you did before and continuing to harm other people or harm those harm them in the same ways that you did that before. Whether it was very it was major or very minute what you did to them, you know? We don't get to decide how we've affected other people's lives, you know? And and I think that that's important. Just like other people don't get to decide how they've affected my life, you know? And I think it's something important to look at. So no, it's not just I'm a sorry, and it's not just a forget what I just did, and it's not just a um, you know I apologize. And um, and and I want to make that very very clear because I do think that for many of my amends, had I just said I'm sorry, you know I apologize, I think like it would have been easier for me to just kind of write it off like it was no big deal, you know. But to look at somebody in their face or to talk to them on the phone or make direct amends to them, which we recommend you look at them in their face, right? To do that and say, I need to take responsibility for this or, you know, what I did was not correct or tell me what I need to do to make this right or tell me what I need to do to correct this going forward. Like, that's powerful, right? And then you do that and then the debt's been paid and you don't have to worry about that debt anymore, you know? It's a really powerful part of recovery. And like I said, I've seen a lot of people go back out and start using again because they're unwilling to do that. And I will say it's hard. I mean, like, you know, I didn't have, I got sober so young that I didn't have tons and tons of amends to make, but I had enough and I had enough difficult ones to make, you know? Um, but I think that that's important, you know? So to d differentiate the difference between an apology and saying I'm sorry and an amends. Because to me, they're completely different things. You know, saying I'm sorry to somebody is bumping into somebody as you walk into the grocery store and go, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that, you know, or excuse me. That That's not the same thing as making an amends because you need to take responsibility. You know, and they're completely two different things. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys. I hope you're having a fantastic weekend, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.